Welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with is Michelle Jensen. So Michelle, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I've taught previously seventh and eighth grade math, and about two years ago I was hired to work as uh, my district calls us innovative learning coaches. And in that role, I help teachers to implement innovative practices, and often that involves blended learning or online tools. I support three schools, one junior high, one high school, and one in our district that is the online high school. Um, I'm part of a leadership team at all of those schools. Okay. So as you're interacting with your school leaders, you know, we're sort of finishing off this school year a little bit odd, um, which means that we can't begin the next school year quite the same way that we would uh, normally. So as you're interacting with your, your colleagues, what sort of advice are you giving them both in terms of how to, what they should be doing to finish up this school year, as well as what they should be preparing to, for the next school year? I think I've learned a lot from them. Uh, I've, I've given advice, but I've learned a lot from the advice that they've given. I've also learned a lot from watching how this has been implemented in our state and other districts and throughout the, the country, because I've talked with other uh, leaders in other areas of the country and, and followed some media. And I think the main advice I would give is to find the right balance of autonomy and support for your teachers. Leaning in the direction of giving them as much autonomy as possible. So when this first started, teachers needed support. They needed a lot of support. And I spent a lot of long hours offering that support. And I don't think that's going to go away as we continue on whatever method of education we continue with in the fall. Um, but I've also noticed that there's been a difference. And in some areas of the country, things have gone really well. And in some areas of the country, not so well. Um, and so the district that I work in, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but there have been a lot of really good, impressive things that have happened in this district. And I really attribute it to the amount of autonomy that was given to the teachers. Um, as Michael Fullen says, you can't mandate what matters most. Uh, and I understand the need for systemness, but too much systemness tends to undermine the professionalism of the outstanding educators and, and stifles creativity and innovation. And if we ever needed innovation in education, it's now. Um, I've heard teachers, stories of teachers bending over backwards to support students through email, phone calls, personal visits and tutoring. I even had one teacher that tutored a struggling student from his driveway, um, and not just for her class, but for several other classes that he was in. Um, I've worked with teachers that have connected with their students online in extremely innovative ways. Uh, one teacher said, we need to do human things with the technology. That's what she was really working towards. Um, and I think teachers' willingness to do these types of things and really innovate comes from a sense of purpose that is really achieved well through giving them as much autonomy as possible. Okay. Very good. So as you think about the the fact that you know this is a, a pandemic and pandemics often come in waves so we're likely going to find ourselves back in the situation next year where the system or large portions of the system are shut down for four six eight weeks based on the experiences we've had this time we sort of had to do it quickly it came up on us and uh, we had to scramble a bit how could or what advice would you give to school leaders so that it's a little more seamless next time and that we're not quite so hurried and panicked about getting things done well first of all prepare for this now um, a lot of teachers that i've worked with have said that that they're doing just that 
like, well, I've, uh, they might have uh, put a module into whatever learning management system they're using. And I've talked with some that said, well, there's this other one that's really similar and I'm not teaching it, but it will be something I'll use in the fall. And so I'm going to do that right now to be ready for the likelihood that we will have to do something similar in the fall. And then uh, we've also discussed as a leadership team how to motivate our teachers to take some things that they've learned through this challenge and uh, hopefully take the best of them and continue using those methods in the fall. Uh, we know that you can't replace face-to-face -face interactions. There's just something that happens there that is hard to duplicate online. So I, the, I think as we go into an opportunity where we can interact face-to-face, -face, I think it's important to leverage the things that we've learned we are missing the most, especially if that face-to-face -face time is limited or, or we think it might be. So start out doing as much as you can to connect with those students so that when you are apart or if you are apart, they, they remember your face. They, they can kind of uh, attach your, your wit and humor to statements, even though they're just typed and that's all they can see. Um, so that's my thought on that. Very good, very good. Well, this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Michelle Jensen. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you.